Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Now, note that uh, what is a enter into the fulfillment of the promise, but to enter into rest. And that rest is what we say in Mark chapter 4 and verse 26 when it says, The kingdom of God is as if a man will cast seed into the ground and will sleep, that he enters into rest. And understands now, this is now God's own process to get it done. So he says, let us labor to enter into rest, lest any sh sh should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as honor to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. So this one I just want to share on mixing uh, the word with faith when you hear it. Now, in, a, in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, He that walketh, or he therefore that ministereth the Spirit to you, and walketh miracles among you. It says, how does he get it done? Is it through the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now, that hearing of faith simply means, how does he do it? He does it by causing you to hear what will produce faith in you. So what produces faith in a human being is the word of God. If the word of God is taught, that's why it's called the word of faith that we preach. It is the word that produces faith in them that hear it. So faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now, so I just want to show you something briefly here. He says, the word they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. And we are seeing that in order to get faith into people, they have got to hear the word of God. Now, when they hear the word of God, faith comes. So what Hebrews 4, 2 is saying is this. That the word that was preached did not profit them. The reason is, when the word was preached, faith came alive, but they didn't mix it with faith. Do you get what I'm saying here? Let me explain what I'm saying. If we go to um, um, Acts chapter 14, verse 8 and verse 9, let me show you. It says, there sat a man at Lystra. Now, it says, he that one, I've seen how they work miracles, I've seen it. I've, it's clear now. I've seen it. It says, there was a man who was at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same had Paul speak. Okay, so let's practice it. All right, so... Everybody, bring out your writing pad or your phone, all right? Bring it out. Now, write one thing. Just write, type it. That Let's practice it. That you want God, that this issue, pressure to you are. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> are, are you following what I'm saying here? You know what I mean by pressure to her? There's, there has to be pressure. There's no pressure. Don't write it. If you don't have anything, there's pressure. Don't write it. It won't work. There must be what? Pressure. Now, write that thing, that pressure, write it down. Okay, I'll give you, so I want to show you something. You'll do it now. You'll see that next week, you'll say, want to take testimony. You'll be hearing testimony. 
All right? Just put it right in there because you're going to do something too. We are good? Now, okay. So let's go. And those of you that are watching online too, if there's pressure, write it down. So Acts chapter 14, verse 8. Now, remember what we said. Miracles were worked because the word was preached. Them that had it, faith was produced in them. That's how he that works miracles does it. Preaches, faith is produced, and then miracles start happening. Now, but Hebrews 4.2 said, the word preached did not bring any spiritual advantage. Because what I want to show you is this. Because when it produced faith, they didn't mix it with that faith in them. So the word was preached there. The faith was there. The issue is they didn't mix it. Do you agree with what I'm saying here? You see, faith is not the problem. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being what? Mixed with faith inside them. Do you get what I'm saying here? So the faith was in them, but the mix didn't happen. So here is the water, here is the milk, all right? But we did not have... That's not how you create a milkshake, but we didn't, do you get what I'm saying? Because we didn't pour the milk into it, so we didn't mix it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so you have to mix it. Do you, you agree what I'm saying? If you mix it, there'll be profiting. There'll be, profiting means a spiritual advantage. Now, so let's go. So, Acts chapter 14, verse 8. There's such a certain man at least try, impotent in his feet. Is an impossible situation. Crippled from his mother's womb, who had never what? Walked. Okay? The same heard Paul speak. So Paul preached. You agree with what I'm saying? Who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Do you get what I'm saying here? So he preached and there was faith to be made healed. Oh, now, if Paul turned around and walked away, that man would have been crippled. Do you get what I was saying there? But Paul got him to mix that word with faith. Do you get what I'm saying there? So what did he say here? The next verse. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on your what? Feet. Now, the mixing there was the standing upright on the feet, which is why a person can come in and say, what you've never done before, start doing it. What they're trying to do is that, mix something there. Do you get what we're saying here? You agree with what I'm saying? Now, but if he preached and he perceived that that man had faith to make whole and, and he went home, it was wasted. Nobody mixed it. So, the reason I'm telling you to write something is that I want you to mix word with faith on that thing. Do you get what I'm saying here? Before you leave. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or else it will be not taking, not miraculous. So let me show you what makes it fit. All right. So mixing it there. Now, Mark chapter 5 and verse 24. Same thing with this woman with the issue of blood. Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman who had the issue of blood 12 years suffered many things of many physicians had spent all she had, nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. You know, sometimes when we have other options, it won't work. Because the heart is what? Divided. When she spent everything, she had no more money that she put her confidence in at the beginning, that I have cash, cash will solve my problem. That's what is called the deceitfulness of what? Riches. What only the word of God can produce, you might think that cash will make it happen. So she spent everything, rather grew worse. The Bible says what now happened. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press and touched his garment. Now, this is the mixing of that word there with faith. For she said, if I will just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. 
When we look at Romans chapter 10 from verse 8, we'll see here, Romans 10, 8. It says, What say I think the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God who raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Then he says, but how shall they, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is rich unto all those that call upon him. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So he says, the only way they can believe is how shall they believe on him in whom they have not what? Heard. So you have to hear to believe. And he says, how shall they hear without a what? Preacher. So the order is the preacher comes, preaches. A person hears. Faith comes in. And then the person mixes faith there in order to get results. So let's look at this example. In Mark chapter 11, verse 21 to verse 24. Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away, or which you caused. Jesus said unto him, Have faith in God. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. But believe that what they are saying will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Now you pull the scripture in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, how does that faith come? By hearing. How do you mix that word with faith here? If you have that faith... As a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but you shall believe that those things you are saying, or yonder, it shall remove, and nothing shall be what? Impossible to you. In other words, when faith is generated in your heart for something, speak to that thing. Do you get what I'm saying here? If faith is generated in your heart as you listen to the word of God and you are looking for a job and faith is generated and you come out of service and say, that was a powerful service and you don't say, job, wherever you are, I call you forth, you didn't mix it. There will be no profit in what you heard because it generated faith but you don't take any action. Do you get what we're saying here? So I'm trying to show you how to mix the word with faith. It could either be an action where the person jumps up. It could be that the person, ad- this is not that the person said, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. So no. That the person addressed an issue. That you said it to this mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And you did not doubt in your heart. Why didn't you doubt? Because of what you had heard. But you believe that what you are saying will come to pass. You shall have whatsoever he says you say. So he mixed the word there with faith. So he says it didn't profit them because they didn't mix that particular word there with faith. Now, so if faith is generated, and anytime you hear the word of God, faith should be, because it's the word of faith we preach. It is the word that produces faith. Do you get what I'm saying here? Now, the person, therefore, has to mix that word. You have to mix it with faith. In other words, if your head, all right, a word on something, you mix, it produces faith. It says, that thing you had there, mix it there with the faith that's generated in you in order to get results. Now, if you don't mix it, the faith can be there. All right? Kenneth Hagin said when he was on his deathbed, First of all, he didn't believe that, this is what he said. He said, you know, the, what we, we should be sad about is this. When we get to heaven, you'll find out that people had the faith for many things that never manifested. 
Do you get what I'm saying here? They had faith for many things that didn't, wasn't manifest because they didn't know how to walk miracles. It's called the walkings of what? Miracles. He says, he that walketh miracles. The word walk there is to release energy to cause a miracle to happen. That people had faith for things. Let me give another example here. Look at John chapter 11 from verse 42. Before this in 22, if you go to 22, she said, but I know whatsoever you shall ask God, God will give thee. That if you are here, my brother will not have died. But whatsoever you shall ask God, you shall. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall do what? Rise again. Next verse. Martha said, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection and at the last day. Now, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, that is an affirmation of something you believe. That's not mixing the word with faith. Anybody who is mixing the word with faith, he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, see every time Jesus said it, he said, you shall say to this sycamore tree, you shall say to this mountain. In other words, if you're operating in faith, you are talking to things. Do you, are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, you are saying to something here. He says, can these dry bones live again? He said, oh, no. He says, prophesy upon these dry bones. That means you are speaking, all right, directly to the dry bones. That's, you are mixing that word with faith. So, you are saying to that sycamore tree, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Or you are saying, all right, to the job, wherever it is, you are calling it forth. Now, so Jesus now went on. So we get to verse 42. So finally he got to the grave of the man. Verse 42. It says, And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, now, if you go to verse 41, you'll see what Jesus said. Verse 41. He said, take away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast what? Heard me. In other words, God heard me means past tense. That means Jesus had prayed about Lazarus. And God had heard Jesus' prayer. And as far as God was concerned, Jesus was concerned, Lazarus was back to life. Do you get what I'm saying here? Do you get what I'm saying so you pray about something, and you come inside your heart, and you know you have a release in your spirit. That thing is done. But you may not mix it, that faith. Do you get what I'm saying here? Now, if you're going to mix it, if you prayed for Lazarus to come, to come back to life, then you have to talk to Lazarus. That Lazarus, what? Come forth. Is that what you're going to do? If you say I'm the resurrection and the life, that's yes, you are the resurrection and life. You are ministering to yourself. I, you understand what I'm saying? Look, we talk about things. We don't talk to things. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why, look, there's nothing they do. These people, they say they are doing witchcraft. There is nothing inside it. The only thing they say, do you want your child to come from where it is back to Nigeria? That one will say what? Yes. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> uh, go and bring one of their shirts. They'll bring it. Point of contact. All that other one is drama. You see, the pain they are putting is just what? Drama. They say, what's his name? When he gave back to him, what name did you call him when he was born? Then they'll call him, hello! <laughs> Wherever you are! I, you, know, you know, that's what they do here. But what's the Christian say? My God, God, do it for me. God, do it for me. But they are doing, wherever you are, come now. Then in the film, they'll show the man to wake up now. <laughs> Listen, I, I, you have to understand this. Though. You know, I was in England. I was, I was talking to somebody who, who used to be, he was a leader in, he was, he was in England. I talked to someone here. So he told me a story. So when he saw his father to grow up in CAC, his father grew up in CAC. 
So he told me, ah, he said you invited Pastor So. Ah, he said he used to be his pastor in CSU. Ah, that when he was a young guy, that that's where he grew up. So he told me a story about the man's father and his best friend's father back then. He said, so, for real, he said, I mean, he was telling me this in England. He said, so the, the, the man's father, the best friend, went to pray for somebody. So he laid his hands on him. You know, the Bible says, lay your hands, don't lay your hands suddenly upon anybody. You know, that's what it says. He says, lest you be a partaker of that person's sin. In other words, if you lay hands, instead of what is in you going into the person, what is inside the person may enter into you. Do you, you get what I'm saying? So he said, the man laid hands and he was saying it. Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! And he laid his hands. After some time, he realized that his finger started swelling and like a bean was moving in his own skin underneath. What he was saying, come out, was what? Entering. The man said, go back! <laughs> Wait. Wait, before you start laughing, I hope you know that even the spirits that came out told Jesus to direct into the swine. So, Jesus spoke to them and said, enter into that swine. Do you get what I'm saying? He said, if you shall say, it says, it says, one other one I think in Luke says, it shall obey you. But you have to do what? Speak. Not speak about it. Not speak that God is able. You have to talk to the thing. Didn't Peter, when they told him that Dorcas had died, they brought all the clothes. He told people to leave. He knelt down beside her, prayed, and got up. What did he say? Tabitha, I say unto thee, what? Arise. So you may do all of that, but you didn't mix it. Now, one way of mixing there is an action a person takes. Another way of doing it, which is the, which is the, which is the, the most applicable one, that's why when the Roman centurion was come, he told Jesus, come and lay hands. Jesus, he said, look, Jesus, you don't have to lay hands. You can speak the word only. And my servant, where he is, will respond to that word you have said. Uh, do you get what I'm saying? And he spoke. All right? So the second way in which you mix the word with faith is by speaking directly to things. First, you hear, you get to a point where something is inside your heart and then you get up and you speak. So you can spend time in God's word at home, meditating on God's word, reading the word of God and you come to a place where faith gets generated in your heart for the thing you are believing God for but you didn't mix it with faith. You just did it as Bible study, closed the Bible and left. If that young man that came there they did it as we are studying, uh, we are preaching the word of God. He, he perceived, you know, the man didn't know that he should jump. It is Paul that understood it, that told the man to do what? Jump. I'm saying that several things people have believed God for, they have gotten to the point where they had the faith for it. So Kenneth Hagin said, he first didn't believe in healing. People came and told him that, look, he's going to just prepare. In fact, his mother used to come and tell him and grandmother that which songs do you want to your funeral that you are going to die? He said he struggled with it. Finally, his pastor even came and said, look, we just will pray for you so you will die peacefully and all of that. Because he wouldn't believe in the life, in the death. He said God kept telling him, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Because he told God one day, he had children playing outside and he was 16 years old. He was paralyzed and all of that. And he said, God, if this is how you are, that these people are telling me that this is how you are, you put this sickness on me. And they're saying that I should come and meet you in heaven. If you are the one who put sickness on a child and gave him a heart condition where I could never play as a child, then he said, God, I don't want to come and meet you if this is how you are. He said, if you are not like this, show me the way out of this. He said, he began to feel in his heart, pick the Bible and start reading. He said, he opened the Bible. He began to read, he began to read, he began to read. He got to the point, says, thy faith, thy faith, thy faith. God down told him, he said, okay, even if they say there's no divine healing, the time has passed. Has the time of faith passed? He said, no. 
He said it's the faith that got them hold. He said he came to the conclusion. He said this, that if you took a baseball bat and started beating him to death, that did you believe you were healed? He said, I would have said, start beating. I believed in my heart I was completely healed. He said, why were you still on the deathbed? He said he stayed on that bed for another six months. He said until God told him, go back to that scripture. He said he took it. He said, how many times did I say say? And how many times did I say believe? He said, if you shall say. If you shall what? Say to this mountain, be thou removed uh, and cast in the sea. And shall not doubt in your heart. Doubt was one. But believe those things you are saying shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. He said, have you said it? He said, while I was on the bed, he just declared, I am completely healed and began to say it. He said, next thing he heard the voice, well, people don't stay in bed. Get up and put up your clothes. He said, he was weak. He went to the pool, held the pool. He said, as he pulled himself to get up like this, he said it was, you know, sometimes when you walk on floor, it's like pins on your leg. Huh? He said, because he had not used his legs for long, it was like sharp pins and all of that. He dressed up. He said, I was out of that bed in 30 minutes, but I believed and I was there paralyzed for six months. He said, I've spent the last 50 years trying to tell the church this, that they believe many things, they're not saying it. I'm telling you, that people have heard scriptures, their hearts were born, they'll say this is revelation, this is that, all that will be there on the inside of them there, all right? But they don't mix that word with what? Faith. The last dimension of this is praising and singing. And let me just show, and that one is when you are even in crisis. In other words, you know on the inside of yourself what God has said to you. And you know that God and this. But the situations around, that's why God told them in Isaiah 49 verse 13, he said, sing, break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and he'll have mercy upon them. He says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. That's the third way in which you mix the word of God with faith is in that particular time. Look at Hebrews 4.1. Let's just read down and then we'll see where the writer got it from the Old Testament and you see what he was saying. It says, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached wasn't mixed with faith in them that heard it. He now says, for we who have believed to enter into rest, as he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although my works are finished from the foundation of this world. Then he goes on. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And then he says, in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore there is a rest that some must enter in. And them unto it was first preached, entered not in because of what? Unbelief. And then he says, in limited saying to the, today if you, after so long a time, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. He says, for if Jesus had given them rest, he wouldn't have spoken of another rest. All right? Harden not your heart. Go to Psalm 95 and verse 11. If you look at uh, chapter 3, it speaks about him. Okay, let's first go to chapter 3 and verse 5. Okay. All right, 3, 6. But Christ is son of his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and a rejoicing of hope. So you are mixing it when you are rejoicing. Next verse, it now says, that confidence your faith. Wherefore the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works 40 years. And then he says, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, they do always err in their heart and have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not what? Enter into my rest. Now, quickly look at Psalm 95 verse 1. Psalm 95 verse 1. That's where he brought this scripture from. It says, 
Psalm 95. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills are his also. Verse 5. The sea is his, he made it, the hand he formed it. Now look at verse 6 here. It says, Come, let us worship and bow before him. Let us kneel before our maker. He says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his heart. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. What are people hardening their hearts? He says, Worship me. He says, Come before me. All right, but people harden their heart to that and say, I'm not worshiping. Which means God said, Sing, rejoice, break forth. He said, Zion said, the Lord, you are forsaking me. They hardened their heart to that instruction. And he said, because they hardened their heart, they didn't know his ways. They erred at that particular point and didn't enter into the rest that he had prepared. In other words, the people that will enter into that rest, which means that a person had done everything and built everything and says, I'm going to get, let's even say, let's even say something that will pain you more, eh? Let's say that you, you said you are getting your visa, you are going to this country, your friends are already there, they've shown you photographs, they've shown you your bed, in the apartment they've gotten, there are four of us, we have a four bedroom apartment, this is your bed, they, you say you're a Manchester United fan, they put your, the man, you, everything there. You get what I'm saying here? And, and, and you have prayed, and you had that release in your heart, and you, you are saying it, they say we should say it. You get what I'm saying here? You said it. And you got to that point. You know, I know when they refuse visa, you know, those words, it, it will make you, it will, you, you won't believe they are saying it. You, you, but, but you'll be hearing they are saying it. But you won't believe that they are telling you, you are not, ah, you are already on that bed. That they are now telling you are not going. Okay? Now, he says, when you get back, Kneel before your maker. He says, if they had in their heart, he says, they have not understood my ways. Which means there is a rest I will bring them into. But when you had in their heart, he says, they have not understood my way. They put it there. That's what he's saying there. Harden not your heart as in provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, where your fathers tempted me and proved my work and saw my work. Verse 10, he says, 40 long years I was grieved. This is what makes people stay in a place for long. I'm telling you because they don't pass that test of when there's a disappointment, when there's something they had in their heart to worship. That's the place where God brings you into a rest. That's the place where you enter into what God has prepared. That's the moment. All he's saying is that, listen, the people that understand his ways, once they get to that moment where they should hide in their hearts, where they should say, God, why did this happen? Where they should say that, they kneel before God, their maker. And they worship him. And there are many Christians that are suffering from what is called the hardness of the heart. The hardness of the heart is a callous, it's like a substance that is forming inside the heart that makes you unresponsive, that makes you insensitive, all right, to, to the things of God. That makes you, it's almost like there's passive rebellion. You are not outwardly rebellious. You are coming to church, you are doing all of that. But the heart has been hardened all right, towards it, which means there's something it's like a searing there. You are not sensitive. You are not all of that. He says it's because of those moments there. It's like it's like it's like he says, let the lame foot be healed rather than being torn out of the way. What he's talking about is if a person has a fracture and you don't set the bones and you allow it to heal, it will heal in a deformed way. You get what I'm saying here. So in order for you to get that bone straight again, you have to break it again then you now have the opportunity to reset it. Or else that person will have that deformity for life, but the body healed it. So he said before, that's why he says make straight paths for your feet, which means straighten the bone there. 
all right? Follow peace with all men. Make sure there's no anger, there's no resentment towards any person, which means there's no animosity there. He says holiness. Holiness is complete devotion to God in worship, which means, God, I'm worshiping you. I've given myself to you and that I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might, and I love my neighbor as myself. He said, you have set that thing correctly. You are going to see something there. But you can see person that, and when you get to person rebellion, um, the thing there is that when something happens to the person, when the person begins to talk, you'll be, you'll be moved back. Yeah. Ah, and we're together in the department and you're talking like this. What are you talking about? Like, ah, you know that this person has been wounded in the past. There's, there's some grievance that is there inside. So he says, they have not known that that is the place where you are to mix it with praise there. So let's go close so we can do it. All right? So, so you know what happens? To reset that bone, you have to have another disappointment. So they will crack it in again. That's it now. And you know, when you had the injury first, and he said, now they crack so it will be more painful. But God said, that's the only way. That is the word, only way. If it broke your heart, you said, all women are this, all men are this. Because, in fact, I think men are more grieved now, sir, than women. Because if you go on social media, it's women. Fear women. Fear women. I've never, it's, that's all the people are saying that fear. So, what will happen is that the heart has been broken by a woman. God says, we have to find another woman. Okay. Wow! Your heart is broken. Okay, now worship. Then you enter into what? Rest. Where Adam was at rest, when God brought Eve. Do you get what I'm saying here? Because it's anxiety that made you men and miss that one. You are just looking, looking. At it. Today, at this one is fine. This one is not fine. Okay. Too much for fact. So the body is still moving. It says end time to rest. Say, God, I'm not even doing it again. If you want to bring, bring. If you don't want to bring, don't bring. I'm okay. I'm not attracted again. If they wear wig, that's their problem. If they wear lipstick, that's their problem. They say, we mourned unto you. We played to you. didn't dance. We mourned you. didn't weep. You have now entered what? Rest. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you are naming this one. It didn't work. You named that one. It didn't work. God said, go and what? Sleep. So you know what happens when you enter into rest? Your all that motion, I have to travel, disappears. Do you get what I'm saying? Say, God, I'm okay. You bless where you want to bless. All that agitation. <laughs> Uh, visa, uh, visa. You know, even when you are praying, visa, everything, visa, everything, visa. So you are okay. That's when you get an email. That's when they will reach you on LinkedIn. That's when they will come and call you and say, "We have to give you a job here." You say, "How will I get the visa?" Don't worry about it. You have entered what? Rest. God has taken over. Just go and drop your passport. Call so so and so in the embassy. You say, "But it takes 21 days." Don't worry. For hours, you have your visa then you will say there is God. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? You will say there is God. That listen, there is God. Ah, God. <laughs> What's that song? You start singing, there is God. All right? But when there's agitation, you have not entered into rest. Do you get what I'm saying? Are, are you following what I'm saying? A dead person is unresponsive. When you are asleep, you are what? Unresponsive. You've entered into the place of rest. So we'll do two things. So come on. We'll just take one song to sing. If you are in any situation where that pressure and you have experienced disappointment, even if it happened, if it happened one year ago, but you have not recovered. Do you get what I'm saying here? It's time to do the bold step. Thank God that the man said, Young man, I am sorry. You did not what? Quali After you spent all the money, you gathered everything. You did not what? Qualify. Because God has some better thing for you. There's something he has, all right, for you. So you will do that. Then after we finish, you look at whatever it is that is before you, all right, and call it for. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. I'll speak to that. So quickly, let's do it. Hosanna. I rise your feet now. Hosanna. So worship him, just worship him. Hosanna in the high. Exalt him above that situation. Hosanna. 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 Hosanna.
All right. So quietly now in a whisper and only do it once. In a whisper. Whatever it is that is before you that you need to call forth or speak to. If it's an ailment in any part of your body, if it's somebody close to you at home that has a condition in their body, you are only going to make one statement. Jesus just said it once. No man shall eat fruit of thee hereof forever. All right? So you will say it once out of your lips and in a whisper you will declare into that particular situation or you will call it forth if it's a job or call forth anything that you want or speak to that particular thing. So in the name of Jesus, after the count of three, in a whisper, declare God's word to it. One, two, three. Speak to that thing. One statement, don't repeat it. Just say it once to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, everybody who has spoken, who has prophesied, and release their faith this evening for the fulfillment of something that is out of their reach. I ask that angels go forth at the commands of these people Amen. to minister on behalf of these Amen. and to gather in the harvest Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Let's just take that song one more time, just one more time, and praise him, all right, for manifestation. Lord, we lift up your name. Yeah.